Hi, I'm Joyce Krieger. This is ArtLink. Conversations with artists, art professionals, art consultants, designers, art lovers, and art collectors. My guest today is Jennifer Sabella, an artist that I've had the pleasure of working with recently. And she and I collaborated on a project, and I was excited enough about her work to bring her here and have her tell us a little bit about her background. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, Joyce. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in your art career and what inspired you? Um, my mom was an artist, is an artist. Uh, she was a dancer as well on Broadway. Um, and as a kid, she always brought me to New York. We lived in Westport, Connecticut. So we took the train to New York a lot and she would bring me to museums, shows, dance, you know, dances. Um, so I was constantly surrounded by that um, and she also taught dance at home and so there was always artists and dancers at my house so I was kind of surrounded by it. So that sounded like an exciting way to be brought up and it was fun it was very very fun. Creative environment. A very creative environment. Yeah. And at what point did you begin painting? I started out drawing I started out illustrating uh, pen and ink um, and I as a kid when I was younger and then um, I sold a couple of renderings of homes and a couple businesses um, and from there I just I played around. I never had any real formal training. So you've been making money with your art since? Since I was about 18 I started selling. Because I also noticed on your website that you're creating some sort of pocketbooks. Oh, yes, uh, Joe Birds. Yeah, Joe Birds. Um, Tell us a little bit about that. Th uh, this, these wonderful people are um, making these uh, yoga, yoga bag carryalls, um, and they are, they're located in Connecticut, and they found my work um, because we had the same webmaster for our websites, and uh, my webmaster had one of my big paintings on the wall, one of my drips, and they saw that, and they said that would make a great yoga bag. So they used, we collaborated and they used one of my paintings um, for these beautiful bags. I should have brought one in. Um, oh, I wish you had. Yeah, they're, um, and they're made out of recycled plastic, plastic bottles. Um, they're all sourced, you know, in the States. Um, and they sell them on their website and at yoga studios in New York and Connecticut. And when did you, referring to the drip paintings, when did you begin to do the drip paintings? I started those probably about six years ago. Um, my daughter was in my studio when she was about 10 or so and she was playing with my paint and she got a canvas and just started doing that, dripping, you know, in a, in a very basic way and I just loved how it looked. So I kind of took what she was doing and rolled with it and just experimented and experimented and came up with what I do. What was the first show that, where you actually showed those paintings? Um, a show in Southport, Connecticut at Troy Fine Art, um, who represent me down in Connecticut. Um, and that was a, a one-woman show at their gallery. Um, so that was very fun. What was that experience like? How, was, did you, how did you feel when you saw your work in a gallery hanging there all by itself? It's overwhelming. It really is because so, they're very personal. I know that probably sounds kind of silly, but I mean, I remember pretty much everything I've done, every, every line, every, which is crazy, but I remember all that stuff. Um, so to see my days and hundreds of hours surrounded, I'm surrounded by all this stuff, it's, 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 um, it's a pretty cool feeling. I can imagine it would be. Yeah. Now, you and I got together a year or so ago as a result of my working with a designer who saw your work on the Four Point Channel website. Mm -hmm. And the client was doing a hotel in Boston and asked me if I could find you and if I thought that you were capable of doing almost a 17-foot commission for the back of the reception desk at this hotel. Mm -hmm. And I called you. And what happened from that point in your Tell me a little bit about what you perceive to be the challenge. 
Um, well, first of all, your phone call was the, the funniest phone call ever. It was like 10 o'clock at night, and you're like, this is Joyce, I need you to do a, one of your fly papers. <laughs> I was like, um, okay, that, so we had to start with, um, I originally I did my drips, my fly papers, which are the drip canvases, and then I cut them up to make strips, um, which you can, I'm sure you'll have images of. Um, the challenge with that was that it had to be fireproof because it was in a public space. Right. And it's free hanging. It's not like it's up, up against the wall. It hangs so that each strip, there's a slight motion to each strip. So, well, we went through many different ways of fireproofing, trying to make the canvas fireproof, trying to figure out if the fireproof paint would work and that. And that took that probably about a month for us to kind of go through all the stages and figuring out what works, what doesn't work. None of those worked. Turned well, out well, Boston, as you know, has probably the strictest fire codes right. of all the states. Right. That in Las Vegas, and it was of paramount importance that if this piece was going to be that big, and it was going to be hanging, mm -hmm. it had to be fireproof, or right. it never would have gone through. Right. Wouldn't, they wouldn't have allowed it. And we did a couple of videotapes and everything failed. Everything smoked or flamed out or, you know. So we decided on, you came up with aluminum sheet metal, doing it on metal. And that's what we I think we talked about possibly plexiglass. We did. We talked about plexi, right? And the problem with that was that it melted. Right. It would melt right. in toxic fumes. So, yeah, we ended up with sheet metal. So was that collaboration helpful to you or was it, that did was it help? invaluable that was working with you was invaluable to me to grow as as far as what I do um, and have how you I done think. collaborations with anyone mm -mm. else no well you're good at it I will tell you because it was a very successful project the designer was thrilled and I think the hotel which is the Four Point Channel residence in Marriott in Boston was extremely happy with the results. Yeah, well, and you I, took it on and really did a good job. Well, you pushed me. <laughs> I mean, really, I, you know, I, and I wasn't going to back down. I wasn't, you know, because I wanted to. I wanted it to work so badly. Um, you had to do it because the designer asked me if you could do it, and I said yes. Yes. Yeah, and you weren't going to let it drop no. either, so, no. <laughs> which was great because I would have, you know, you really. It was great because having never worked with anybody, it was just my own my own motivation, but you actually motivated me in a whole other direction. I never would have thought to paint on metal and then cut the metal up. I mean, that's, that's a huge um, undertaking, I think, right. to have that done. And it did turn to be a challenge, but it worked out. In your opinion, do you think you will seek other commissions, go to art consultants and maybe see if you could do other commissions with um, consultants or designers? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, it's actually a really fun way to go. Because I think one of the things about collaborations is it does expand your horizons. Mm -hmm. And this is proof. I think um, it's a different way to go. It's one thing to be painting in your studio. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what it's like to be isolated in the studio and painting. I love it. <laughs> it's it's my, my safe place. It's uh, I have my music on, I have my dogs around me, or I have my podcast, and I just, I go into a zone. And when I'm, when I'm painting, I have a, um, it's like meditation for me. It really is. It's, uh, I'm in my own head. I don't have people asking me questions. I don't, because I have four kids, so there's always. Four kids? Yeah, I have four children. So there are always, there's always interruptions, but when they're at school and I'm alone painting, that's. Now, are you able to make a living as an artist? No, not yet. It's a goal. So that's your goal for the next five years? Mm -hmm. And how do you plan to go about that? Uh, well, working with you. <laughs> We're <laughs> collaborating as much as I can with, through commissions. I've gotten a couple of commissions. Um, it's hard, you know, it's hard because I am also a stay-at-home mom, so my job is both art and being a mom. Do you envision yourself ever breaking away from the drip paintings and starting mm -hmm. to do something different? Yeah, I, I have done many different things in the past. This was, this happened to catch on. My drip paintings happened to be the one thing, but um, I've done, I worked with oils a lot. I used to do a lot of oil paintings of um, 
animals, which I sold a lot on commission of dogs, um, barns. I noticed when I looked at your website that both the dogs and the barns were always a different perspective. Yeah. Tell me a little bit why. Well, dogs are, I love dogs. So any, if I can capture a, capture a dog's expression, I just. So you don't need the whole dog. No, nah, I don't need the whole dog, just the face really. Just, you know, the face and, or, the, or the posture. Uh, barns, I'm, uh, lines obviously from the drips. Line, anything linear, there's something about something that doesn't really move that I love. Like barns, they're just, they're shapes, they're very basic shapes and I love that. And I love filling it and making it more than just a line, but what you're really seeing is just the shapes and the lines. Jennifer, you're basically a self-taught artist. Mm -hmm. Have you found that hinders your ability to show in a gallery in any way? It hasn't yet. And you know what, if it has, I don't know. Um, because I've had several solo shows and it's never been, it's not really, if it has come up, it just doesn't matter at, the, at that point. Well, I mean, there are many famous artists that have never had a formal art education mm -hmm. that are very successful. But I always wondered if that was something that you wanted to eventually go back to school. Did you feel it was necessary? If money was no object, do you feel going back to school would be advantageous for you or you don't feel that it was something you would incur? I would like to. I mean, I would never say no. I love learning. I, I teach, I go online, I, I read voraciously. I'm just always trying to learn something. Um, different blogs, websites, I just try and learn as much as I can. But I would go back. I would, I would go to school, yeah, not Do go you back. use social media at all to drive people to your website to try and get more business? I should, but I don't. I don't really know how to. So is that something in the future you think you would like to try? Because I know a lot of artists today use social media, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook mm -hmm. or other social media, to help their business grow. Yes, I definitely will, and I should. It's just a matter of doing it. Well, um, with all those kids and all Well, that's what I was going to say. I need to get one of my kids. All those kids and all those animals. Mm -hmm. I need to get one of my kids to help me do that because they're, you know, they know how to do everything. So even just a mass mailing, like um, that artist Wayne Kaiser has a painting a day. He's just, he's you know pretty well known for his painting a day, and he I get an email from him every day. So do thousands of other people, and I look at it every day, and they're pretty cool, and that, that's a great idea to send. To I think send. a lot of I've seen a lot of artists do that, mm -hmm. but I think they do it more for themselves than they do necessarily to drive business to their website because. When you force yourself to do a painting a day, mm -hmm. um, something happens. It's a commitment, a big commitment. Oh, yeah. And I know that we had spoken earlier um, in the week with another, with a gallery owner, and one of the things that he pointed out that he looks for when he takes on a new artist is a commitment to their work. Mm -hmm. And a painting a day certainly shows a big commitment. Yeah. I couldn't do that. I work too, I work uh, Well, your work takes so long. Yeah. Would you be willing to share your technique with us? Sure, of the drip painting? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, I use thin acrylic paint. I have various empty bottles. I mix my colors with, with the paints, and then there's a medium that I use called pouring medium that Liquitex makes. And I pour the, put that in with the paint, shake it up, and I will just stand in front of my canvas. I tape, usually I'll tape it off if I want it taped off or not. And I'll stand there and I'll squeeze, let it run, squeeze, let it run. And then sometimes I'll guide it down with a, I have a stick. How do you control it? Uh, as much as I can with a stick. Depends if it hits something and it decides to go off, then I can't really control it. Now do you use that as an accidental? Sometimes if, it, if I like it, yeah. Or do you it's, toss it? Well, I don't really toss it. I can always go over it. That's the wonderful thing about it is you can, if I don't like it, there's so many layers of drips on there that I can just cover up something I don't like. And then so I'll do, I'll do a row, you know, so there's space in between so that the colors aren't mixing and blending. I don't like that. Wait for those to dry. I'll flip the canvas and do the same thing. 
flip the canvas until when I get... When you say flip it, so you go from the top to the bottom and mm -hmm. the bottom to the top? Yep. Oh. So I'll actually turn the whole piece over on its, so it's the opposite, opposite way, and then start dripping from the other way. Let it dry. And I just keep doing that repeatedly until um, I like how it looks. And I like the, I, it has to have the right depth. Uh, the color has to be pieces have to show through of the little bits from the past because it's all about the layers of um, what you cover up. So what have been your influences in your artwork? Other artists work or? Started with Edward Gorey, uh, my, his black and white obviously. Um, that's my These line These are drawings. the children illustrations. Well, they're not really for kids but well. <laughs> well, they kind of, I mean they're kids but they're not, you know, they're a little morbid but I love that. Um, so he was my illustration influence, definitely, when I was doing my um, line paint, line drawings. Uh, artists would, Wolf Kahn, I'm a huge mm. fan. Love him. His color? His colors are just... But he does mostly landscapes. You don't do landscapes, right. do you? Well, he does barns. He did a lot of oh, barns. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. You're right. He did just dreamy. Um, Richard Diebenkorn, I love. Um, there's a lot that are not coming to the top of my head, but... Yeah, definitely. Other ar artists definitely influence me. Absolutely. I think that it's hard to be in a vacuum and not look at other artists' work. Mm -hmm. But your work is very unique, and I don't see a lot of people working exactly the way you do. So mm -hmm. you've kind of come upon something that's interesting, unique. The fact that you cut the canvas um, really, I think, gives it a different twist. Mm -hmm. And probably that's the single thing that made the designer um, intrigued with your work because it was so unique and so different. That actually, the cutting for the flypaper was a mistake. That was, so tell us yeah, about it. Yeah, it was. Um, I was doing. I had taped off a drip painting, and when I pulled the tape off, because like I said, I flipped the canvases, so there was a lot of paint on that blue tape. Um, when I pulled it off, my son was in the room with me and he's like, that is so cool. Because when I pulled it off, it curled, like flypaper curl, you know, it's gross, but it curls. And uh, I thought that, that was just like a really great mistake to happen because that's how it all started was that piece of excess tape. So you basically, from then on, started cutting them. I tried to figure out, yeah, how I could incorporate that because it, it took me a while to figure out to do it on the canvas and then she not not the sheet metal but also on aluminum uh, flashing, a thin metal flashing, um, which I had tried and different ways of now I'm trying it on Tyvek because that flows really cool. It, it the when you paint on it, it it's got a a different kind of flow to it when I cut it. I think one of the things that I was most impressed with with you in the commission that we did together was your tenacity. You were determined <laughs> that you were going to succeed and get this thing done and done correctly because when we first installed it, we installed it, if you remember correctly, at the instructions of the way the designer wanted mm -hmm. it and it really wasn't, it wasn't showing its best. Yeah. And you came in, how many pieces were there? Probably over 400. You took 400 pieces down yep. and reinstalled 400 pieces, again, a little bit lower on fish wire. On fish wire, and each yeah. one had to be hand tied. My daughter right. helped me hand tie them, and I got on the ladder, and I had to adjust each one with on fishing line, which was really hard, because <laughs> I, had, I had to do it by eye. So getting down, look back, and get back up there. Well, it was successful, and I think it's gonna be the beginning of people seeing your work and really asking you to do more. Um, the question is, and as an artist, where do you go from there? Bigger. I'd love to do a bigger piece than that. I mean, that so was we 14 need, So now five. we're talking about airports. Yeah. I would love to do it on the acrylic like we, sh like we did the sample of. You know that, remember the sample right. I showed you? Yeah, I would love to do that. I would, there's so many different ways you could do it. We also talked about prints. Yeah, prints. Doing prints would be beautiful. Yeah. You could do prints on acrylic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of different things I would love to do with that. Take it different places, even make them shapes. Now, I noticed also that you've done sculpture. Is that something you're going to go back to, or are you done with that? No, I would go back to that. I, you know, I go in waves. Sometimes I just, like right now, I'm working really small. Because I did, I've done so much, so many big pieces in the last three years that I need to go back to 
very small. And that's what I'm doing now. But the chair sculptures are the mm -hmm. ones I'm thinking about. What was that for? That was originally, the first one was for um, a charity in uh, where I live. Um, chair, it's a, get oh. it. So every, they, different artists made chairs um, of their own vision. And so mine was the ladder back with the two, two sides to it um, with copper wire. And that was all very crudely made. I just, I thought of it, I hammered it together and I just wrapped the wire and distressed it. Jennifer, how do people find you? so that you can work with them? Do you make phone calls and go after them or do you hope that they'll find your website? It's been, all been luck really for me, which is, I'm extremely fortunate that way. You found me or you, the designer found me through my website. Um, word of mouth, uh, the yoga bag, the Joe Bird um, company found me through my webmaster. Um, from the painting being on the wall, I've gotten several shows from people seeing I got a show um, in Connecticut because someone saw one, my chair for the charity event. She had that, she would pulled it, the photo of that out of um, a magazine that it was, was featured in and she, it was two years later, I got a phone call, oh I wanted you to do a show at the gallery. It's like, so really very, very fortunate. My first gallery representation in Connecticut was um, me not knowing any better and I went in with some color photographs. I didn't even have a digital camera and I went in and she was there and I just said, I don't know how you do this, but this is what I do. And she, I brought paintings up to her that day and they sold within two days. Now, do you have any intention of trying to market yourself more? I mean, I know you're now on Art Specifier mm -hmm. and hopefully that will help bring some attention to your work, but what about other platforms? Are you thinking about blogging or doing anything else to draw attention to your work? Um, I'm thinking about it, but I haven't done it yet. I, I, I will. I will. Um, I mean, I noticed you've gotten a lot of publicity. I have, and that's also been very fortunate. The, the show at Troy Gallery, the editor for um, Venue Magazine came in and she wanted to do a story um, because she loved the work that she saw. Do you think she loved the work that she saw as well as loving Jennifer? Oh, I don't know. It would be nice to think that. I mean, that. you're I such an, a, a likable person oh, that I you. think that that helps you in a lot of ways because you're very social and you're very out there. Um, and your work speaks for itself. It's dynamic. It has a certain appeal to it. And certainly from the design community, it's outstanding because it works with anything, mm -hmm. any decor. Um, I know you recently did a commission for a client in Florida. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard back yet if it's been installed, but I know that they were stretching it at the um, framers a couple of days ago. Uh -huh. So we'll get some installation shots of that for you. Great. What's your website address? Uh, it's jennifersabella.com. It's uh, S-A-B-E-L-L-A.com. Okay, so if anyone wants to look further at your work, mm -hmm. Jennifer, what was one of the most exciting things that happened to you in your career? I have two. One was um, a couple years ago, I was in a group show in Greenwich, at the Greenwich Art Society, with, um, it, was a called, it was a color show, um, and I was with Kenneth Noland, Robert Motherwell. They were exhibiting in the show with you? Yeah. <gasps> uh, well, yeah, our pieces were all together. Robert that Motherwell, was there was a Calder. Um, it, it was just... Helen Frankenthaler. It was pretty, pretty exciting, and yeah. that was one of my first big shows that I had done. I had what five a lucky in opportunity that. for it you! It was amazing. People wait a lifetime for that. Yeah, that was wonderful, and that that came about from a smaller show I had done in Greenwich. And what was the second thing you talked about? Oh, two um, I did a show a couple two year, a year ago at Five Point Gallery in Torrington, and it was a solo show, and it was um, in a beautiful space there. Torrington, Connecticut, and um, just and it was to see my work on this in this beautiful gallery was really spectacular um, to be surrounded by it and to have a real uh, just a really professional staff and it was really exciting. That was a big high point for me. What would you like to happen in the next five years to your career? I'd like to be self-supporting with my art. And I'd like to continue to 
uh, make it to innovate, not just do the same thing. I no wanted. desires for a big New York gallery? Oh, sure. I, I would never say no to that. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Um, as long as I'm working and busy and using my head that's and my hands, that's really important to me. You don't live in Manhattan. No. How is living in a small town in Connecticut influencing your life, either positively or negatively? I think it's only positive because I live in a small town um, and I work at home. So I'm isolated from what's uh, the surrounding culture in a way because I'm, I work at home and when I'm working I'm in a vacuum. Um, but when I come out of the house of my shell to drive my children around or do whatever I have to do, I'm surrounded by the most beautiful landscape of Litchfield County where I live. It's just stunning. But it's I like being removed from the hustle and bustle of constant culture, constant culture, because I can't absorb it all. And I think when I do absorb it, it takes a long time for it to settle in, and then it leaks out in different ways. So I think with all of anything I've ever created, um, I didn't start painting until I was in my 30s. Um, I did You drawings. don't even look 30. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't, I mainly drew up until then. Um, so I think all the art that I was introduced to through my mother and through when I lived in Boston for many years, it took that long to kind of get in, s filter down, settle, and then come out how it's come out. So I think uh, living in rural Connecticut also is good to me that way because it takes a long time for it to come out. But when it does, it's very different from what I would ever think I could do. I know from working with you that you are very fastidious and very particular about every detail. What's it like for you to be in a studio where everything's a mess? The kind of painting that you do is so uncontrolled. It's messy. It's, uh, my floors are like rainbows. I've got troughs um, set up where the paint drips into. I'll prop, like when I did the piece for the Marriott, I had those sheet metal pieces. I, on all, all four walls, I had these five by five pieces of sheet metal propped up against plywood, against the wall, and underneath troughs like wooden troughs. You built them. Yeah. Um, and the paint dripped into those troughs. So I, I would, I walked, I had a bottle of paint. I went wall to wall. I went round and round and round and round. Just, it was like this. And then as the lines filled up each sheet metal, I got dizzier and dizzier. But it was cool. I'd walk out of there like this. But I, when I leave my studio, which is in my home, I walk out of my studio into another room. And I live very, I'm very neat. Like the house minimalist. is minimalist, exactly. Very Swedish that way, even though I'm not Swedish. So, but then, so you walk into my studio, and it's crazy. It's just, it's a mess. It's, there's rainbows on the floor. There's paint on the ceiling. There's, it's everywhere. I can imagine with your technique that it's something that would make um, a mess. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, there's, there's two sides to me. I guess there's the underside, which is just oh, crazy. And then you go out into my world, and I'm, Neat and clean. But it's the neat and clean part that inspires your work because your work is minimal work as far as I'm concerned. It is, but to get to the minimal, you have to get th through the mess. One of the things I like to ask artists is to please complete this sentence. Art is. Art is whatever you see and makes you feel something makes it resonate with you or it's also just a really pretentious thing to say whatever it is whatever you think is beautiful if that's what you want if you're looking for um, or ugly some people I'm amazed at what is considered great sometimes but that's me that doesn't you know people are different so I don't know it's uh, I can't really say because that's a pretentious thing to a to answer I can't answer it I think you answered it perfectly well. <laughs> okay. Jennifer, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Joyce.